The melting of ice glaciers is accelerating. That's the bleak finding from a study published today in the journal Nature. Among the dramatic results, an almost sevenfold increase in glacial thinning in two decades. Here's Professor, Professor Andrew McIntosh from Monash University, who's been a lead author for the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Andrew, welcome. Uh, firstly, what's your reaction to the results of this study? Uh, it, look, it didn't surprise me in a way, but it's the first time we've had this comprehensive mapping of glacier change and uh, uh, the results are so um, so accurate compared to previous studies and what's really amazing is it's for every glacier on earth not just uh, you know a few here and there which is what we've done previously so what are the big takeouts of this what are the figures that are that stagger you uh, the, the, look, the doubling of the, the mass loss rate in the last decade, that's, that's really su um, surprising to me. And uh, I guess it, it, it just lets us know that, that ice is changing so much and that uh, the future is looking pretty bleak uh, unless we do something about it. What's happening in our part of the world? So in, in New Zealand, uh, glaciers have retreated uh, dramatically, and we've seen that. Just um, tourists going to see the ice have seen how much they've retreated. But uh, this study shows that all of the New Zealand glaciers have retreated, and particularly after about 2010, uh, there's been a, a huge mass loss there. Uh, so, you know, our, our nearest glaciers are not looking so great. And uh, to the south, uh, the Antarctic ice sheet is a bit of a different story, but um, but this study provides some insight into what's happening in the in the Antarctic Peninsula for the first time, and uh, it really shows that ice loss is occurring there too. So specifically, what is what is happening there that we were that we didn't know before? Uh, so on the Antarctic Peninsula, um, previously um, we, the 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 sign of the error was about the same as the sign of the signal, so we weren't really sure what was happening. Um, but now that uncertainty's reduced so much, we can see that there's consistent ice loss on the Antarctic Peninsula over the last couple of decades. Is the ice melt worse here around New Zealand and the Antarctica, the Antarctic? Is it worse here than in other parts of the world, Andrew? Uh, no, it's it's been um, dramatic uh, in most places. There are a few bits and a few areas here and there where uh, less ice has been lost, but um, uh, but what we're seeing here is fairly consistent with uh, many other parts of the world. So why had we underestimated the pace of this uh, ice melt? Is there something that scientists haven't taken into account, or something that's come out of left field that's been unexpected? Look, um, measuring glacier change is is a technical challenge. There are more than 200,000 glaciers on Earth. So this is the first time that somebody has developed a method to measure the change on each glacier individually. And that's why we've got this uh, new advance. Uh, it's, it's because we've been able to do this for the first time. Every glacier w was looked at worldwide, which is astonishing in itself. How was it done? Uh, it was using satellite images uh, and it was um, making uh, kind of using a, a, an old technique but a new computational um, advance that allows you to look at the surface elevation change of each glacier so it's making basically digital elevation models you map the top of one glacier uh, and then a few years later you look at it again and see how it's changed so what are the implications of this ice melt then andrew in terms of sea level rises so uh, sea level rise has been accelerating and uh, this study uh, shows that Glacier melt has been one of the main contributors to this acceleration. And uh, looking forward, I guess it's not good news. Glaciers have got a bit of an inertia. So uh, once they start to melt, it's a bit hard to stop them. And uh, some of the change that we're seeing right now is locked in, uh, but not all of it. So uh, what we do in terms of future climate change emissions is going to make a big difference to the trajectory of glaciers. And if, uh, if we uh, curb emissions dramatically, then we'll still lose about um, another 20% or 30% of the ice that we have. Um, but if we continue to burn fossil fuels in a fairly um, unconstrained manner, then the ice loss will be much greater at more than 60%. Uh, in some parts of the world by 2100, most of the glacier ice will be gone. So are there other implications apart from those sea level rises? Uh, in places where people use uh, meltwater from ice uh, to, uh, for, to, to basically service their livelihood, uh, this, is, this can make a big difference. Uh, so, uh, for example, in Central Asia, countries like Pakistan or parts of India, uh, Tibet, these, these places use glacier melt um, in order to, um, uh, to water their agriculture and so on. Uh, when, when glacier ice is gone, um, that source of water will be um, no longer available to them. Professor Andrew McIntosh, thank you. You're welcome.